Hello and welcome uh, to Pharmacology 101, Understanding How Drugs Work. This is the first part of a first lecture on pharmacology. So, by the end of this series of lectures, you will have a basic understanding of drug metabolism. You will learn what are enzymes, what actually happens to the drug when it enters our body, and also you'll have some basic understanding of the anatomy and physiology. So, let's get started. What is pharmacology? In the most basic sense, it's basically the science that studies how drugs work. So it's a study of drugs and how they behave within our body. It's actually a multidisciplinary science partaking from a number of basic sciences, such as biology, biochemistry, chemistry. Uh, medicine and pharmacy are heavily rooted in pharmacology. Why? Because essentially, you know, in order to apply therapeutic applications of drugs and know how to treat diseases, you need to know the background of pharmacology. And for you, it's very important because pharmacology could be an important and valuable marketing tool. You probably all heard the saying that knowledge is power. And you probably noticed that when you're talking to people who are true experts in their field, somebody who really knows what they're talking about, these individuals tend to leave a very long-lasting impression on you. So perhaps you begin to admire them. Perhaps you want to be like them. And in your case, pharmacology is going to be an answer to building a personal rapport with a physician or a client. So physicians go to school for a long time. And you can see that the statistics are from the last population census and you can see that about 1%, 1.9% of people in this country have a professional degree such as a medical degree, um, a dentist, a pharmacist, or a doctorate degree such as a PhD and 1.2% of people have a doctorate degree. So in essence you're going to be talking to 3% uh, of the most educated people in this country, so you really need to come across well. Moving past the traditional role of pharmacology that focused on drugs, which were chemical entities, pharmacology also now studies biologics. So what are biologics? As the name implies, these drugs are going to be derived from living organisms. And they're basically therapeutic modalities that are used to treat different diseases. Uh, this isn't something new. You know, the first generation biologics were actually derived directly from animals or even humans. For example, insulin that was derived from pigs or cows. And now we are a little bit more sophisticated, so the biologics are actually made using a recombinant DNA technology. So here we have a biologic drug that's called Humira, and we'll be talking more about this drug an electro and rheumatoid arthritis, but basically this specific drug, it's a first fully human monoclonal antibody, and what it does, it binds to this biochemical uh, molecular entity in our body that's called TNF factor alpha, and TNF factor alpha is basically a marker of inflammation. It's a cytokine that's involved in inflammatory processes in our body. And if you know anything about rheumatoid arthritis, you know that inflammation is a big problem in rheumatoid arthritis in the joints. So by binding to TNF factor alpha, Humira virtually um, blocks its actions, so it prevents inflammation from occurring. And pharmacology studies all of this, which is fascinating. So now under the umbrella of pharmacology, we have a number of different sciences and you should be aware of the differences. So pharmacokinetics uh, is going to study what happens to the drug within our body. Pharmacodynamics is going to study how does a drug affect our body. And pharmacogenomics is going to study how does our genetic makeup affect the drug response. Now the reason why this is so important is because now with the advancement of medicine and technology, actually have an understanding that based on your genetic makeup or based on which alleles of the genes that you have, you can produce different drug response. So, you know, different alleles encode for our hair color or our eye color. And likewise, they encode for enzymes that metabolize drugs. For example, 
opiates are going to be metabolized by a family of enzymes. And now we know that for opiates, they're normal metabolizers, they're poor metabolizers, and they're ultra-rapid metabolizers. And not too long ago, there was a story that was published, and it was also published on the FDA website, talking about a mother who was an ultra-rapid metabolizer for opiates who was breastfeeding her baby. So unfortunately, what happened is, you know, the mother was taking codeine, which is an analgesic, and codeine is metabolized to another opiate, morphine. So the coating that she was taking was ultra-rapidly um, converted to morphine, and her baby that she was breastfeeding was exposed to it and passed away. And this is how gen uh, genetics can really play um, a role in pharmacology, and that's what pharmacogenomics studies. So now, what happens to the drug when it enters our body? Basically, there are four... Um, basic processes that will apply to each drug or each substance that we consume. And the acronym that will help you remember these is basically ADME. And it stands for absorption, distribution, elimination, and metabolism. Absorption basically describes the event when the drug enters our body, when it gets released from whatever dosage form it came in, for example, a gelatin capsule or a control release tablet, and then it becomes absorbed into the bloodstream. Distribution is exactly what it sounds like. So basically, drug enters systemic circulation. From the systemic circulation, it's going to be distributed to other parts of the body. During metabolism, drug is going to be processed and altered in some way. And then during excretion or during elimination, the drug is going to be eliminated. So before we talk about distribution, uh, let's make sure that we understand where does, a blood, uh, where does a drug actually go once it gets into the bloodstream. What is this bloodstream and what happens to the drug? So let's review um, the basic circulatory system. What is circulatory system? So circulatory system is sometimes referred as a cardiovascular system in humans. And what it is, it's basically just a network that's comprised of different blood vessels, such as arteries, veins, capillaries and it essentially what it does it carries or circulates that's why it's called circulatory system blood around our body so it's think of it as a blood transport system it's also a very sophisticated system it's comprised of two different circuits that's why it's called a dual circuit system and the first circuit is going to refer to pulmonary circulation, while the second circuit is going to refer to systemic circulation. So you can see here you have pulmonary circuit, and here you have systemic circuit. So what is actually the difference between those two? So when you think about pulmonary circulation, the simplest way to think about it is that it's going to transport blood from the lungs to the heart and then back. And the more complex way to think about it is that it's going to transport deoxygenated blood and it's transported from the right side of the heart and um, to the lungs and then oxygenated blood is going to be transported to the left side of the heart. So deoxygenated blood is the one that's going to lack oxygen and contain mostly CO2. And now when we talk about systemic circulation, what's happening there? So blood is going to be transported so blood is going to be transported from the heart to the rest of the body. Then uh, when it's transported in the rest of the body, what happens? You, you have some sort of exchange happening um, in the capillary beds or in the tissues where um, the capillaries innervate. And then the blood is going to be transported back. Um, and essentially the blood that leaves and the one that's transported back so this is going to be um, deoxygenated blood coming back. So this blood is going to lack oxygen. So remember that the vascular system is connected to what? It's connected to a special pump. Look at this beautiful heartbeat here. So the vascular system is going to be connected to the pump of the heart. And the heart is going to have four chambers two ventricles and two atria. So what the blood will do, it will leave the heart through the left ventricle to the aorta and the body's largest artery. 
So aorta is the body's largest artery. And where does aorta go? So aorta will differentiate into smaller arteries. Then it will differentiate into different little arterioles. Then little tiny capillaries. And what the capillaries actually do, the capillaries are going to innervate the soft tissues. And then here in soft tissues, this is where you're going to have the gas exchange occurring. So basically what happens there when we say gas exchange? So the oxygen will diffuse out of this freshly oxygenated blood into the cells. And then from the cells, the waste products of the cellular metabolism and carbon dioxide will diffuse into this blood. And how does this gas exchange occur? So this is going to happen across the cellular membranes via a process of diffusion. And diffusion is basically just, you know, things moving from a more concentrated area into the lesser concentrated area. And then once all of this happens, what happens? So now through the venous capillaries, then through the veins, the blood is going to go back to the heart and it will re-enter the heart at a chamber known as a right atrium. So as your heart is beating and contracting every single time, uh, the blood is going to go through this special pathway, the special route, and it's going to be part, it's going to be pumped into the certain blood vessels and then it's going to continue through a circulatory system. So with each single heartbeat, it's basically going to travel through the body. And as it travels, the drug is going to be delivered to its site of action or the byproducts of its metabolism are going to be excreted. So for example, when the blood is going to return to the lungs and it's going to be deoxygenated, it's going to carry waste. So imagine that it carries the waste that's a byproduct of drug metabolism. So this is a principle behind detecting alcohol in your breath for alcohol breath, breath test. So when the police officer pulls you over and they're testing your breath for alcohol, what they're actually testing for is they're testing for the products of alcohol metabolism that are present on your breath in the expired air. So this is going to conclude the end of lecture one, the first part of it, and now we're going to move forward to Pharmacology 101 Lecture 2.